Welcome back. All right, today uh, we're going to tackle one of the open issues that I had actually forgotten about. Um, I guess back in October last year, um, around the time that the Crazy House tournament went down, this issue got filed in the issue tracker for um, Stockfish. Uh, where we want to be able to figure out what's the end game phase of a game um, for each variant. And so uh, I completely forgot, and I guess I created this issue, and I do want to attempt to bring some resolution to it. Uh, I guess let's briefly skim through this. Um, so we noted that like you can accommodate different material values per variant, so how much is a piece actually worth? Um, also figure out like um, when does the end game really begin in a variant? Um, so yeah, we never reached any conclusion here other than every idea we tried so far didn't work. Um, that's not to say that every idea fails, it's just that all the ideas we've attempted have failed. And so back in January, uh, Fabian came up with this great comment um, that perhaps the evaluation parameters as they stand right now are tuned to the current limits uh, for middle game phase and end game phase. And uh, he's of the opinion that Atomic and Crazy House are perhaps the most interesting with uh, regard to figuring out when does the end game begin. Um, now I have the opinion that um, Crazy House is another beast entirely, but that's not to say that we can't get some utility from changing that parameter. Um, but yeah, I think that we'll have interesting results with Atomic Chess. Um, if we tune, um, uh, what's it, the middle game and end game limit. Um, I tried introducing some other parameters and that just muddied the waters a bit, but I never got back to the original concept. Uh, so let me make sure that we're on the master branch. This patch here completely fails. Let's delete it. Um, Let's see, get whole origin master just to make sure we're up to date with the master branch. Um, clean, get branch. All right, so we're gonna check out tune variant, which is the branch I created for helping with variant tuning. Rebase it upon master. Uh, oh, I've already done that. All right, so now we've got a perfectly, we have a version of Stockfish that has one additional code change uh, that injects some code to help tune variant uh, parameters and other parameters, really. Really, any parameter can be tuned with this tuning code that the Stockfish team uses that we also are using for this branch. Um, by the Stockfish team, I mean the official upstream uh, team that maintains the Stockfish 8 and what's going to eventually be Stockfish 9 uh, repository. Um, so let me get checked out. Um, be, let's see. Tune Atomic Phase. And so basically what I'm going to do here um, uh, let's see, is it still called mid-game limit? Yes, it is. Uh, you'll note that we've got this table of constants. Not to be confused with a table of contents, but here we've got phase limit, um, which is the same for every variant, right? Now, I'm not intending to add tons of code. In fact, this probably should say const right there. So it's my mistake for not having introduced that earlier. Um, but I do want to add some tuning code that tunes both values. So we're going to say tune 
Oh, um, to figure out what range to use. Um, and then similarly, we want to tune all the material constants like pawn value, knight value, and so forth. Um, in fact, take a shortcut here. Um, just reference the array, because this is what I really want to tune is piece value. This should also be a constant array, but it isn't. Uh, all right, so I think that about does it. I just need to figure out what are appropriate values for these rook value, queen value, phase limit, etc. Okay, so this is on the order of order of magnitude going up to like 16,000, we'll say. Um, this has got to be somewhere between zero and uh, that magic number, uh, two to the 16th. Um, so, I forget. Wait, BC 2 to the power of 16 is. Oh, never mind. I'm think, confusing that with some other number. 2 to the power of 12 is 4096. 2 to the power of 14 is 16,384. So that's going to be my upper limit. We'll just say 16,000. Um, so make this uh, phase limit upper bounded 16,000. And then for the material values, um, see what's our our greatest value here is 2621 um, let's see there's no special values I need to know about here um, so I guess I'll just cap this at 3200 I really don't expect the values to change too much Uh, so say so three two hundred, and that's good. I think that's it. This ensures that between every game being played, parameters that are passed into the engine change the values in these arrays, which in turn changes how the program functions at runtime. Um, are there any other bonuses they want to try to tune at the same time? Probably not. If I start tuning too many things at once, you have to really increase the number of games um, in order to deal with the curse of complexity, in order to manage that. Uh, so its status shows that I've only updated the one file. Get diff shows what lines we changed. Um, I meant to do this for atomic, not anti chess. We'll say atomic. So I think there are atomic is quite popular and it's not too dissimilar to the standard chess rule set. Alright, so status shows we're about to commit PSQT. Uh, having added these two lines of code, let's make sure it compiles first and then commit it. Make it clean, make build, define my architecture, because apparently that's something I need to do each time I do a build. Um, maybe if I were using CMake or a different compiler I wouldn't have to go through the trouble, but yeah, apparently I do, which is okay. At least the compilation step is fast, because I say to uh, queue up six uh, tasks at once for compilation. So it's able to use all the cores of my uh, Linux PC. Um, so uh, are we going 
get a result here. Okay, the last step is the longest, but it did compile. And then I could say stockfish bench atomic, and it goes through all those test positions. I could say bench and just comes up with the standard chess benchmark, which goes through a whole variety of, uh, I guess, 42 sample positions and comes up with a number of nodes that were searched um, during the computation of, uh, for that. If I just run the program by itself, you'll see all the parameter names that are to be provided to the program for tuning purposes. Um, so git commit, our message is going to be tune phase um, limit. I forget what, what were the things here? Phase limit and piece value. Tune atomic variant phase limit and piece value. Cool. Um, oh, wait. <laughs> okay. Well, here I'm actually going to be a bit more particular. I'm going to edit my changes. Um, I have not yet pushed my changes to. Um, GitHub, so I can feel free to change things if I like here. I want to tune this for middle game and then phase limit atomic variant end game. And I know this isn't a functional difference from what I changed when I initially typed. Um, but I think this in the long run will make it a little bit easier to understand. So it just has to recompile the one source code file and then the binary, and then we'll see um, it'll be clear from when I go to run the program that the parameter names are just slightly easier to interpret. Now I could be as explicit as possible and define exactly which parameters I want to, but yeah, mg is a zero, eg is one, so this defines the two phases. Um, so this will make it a little bit easier to interpret the results when we go look at the graph that eventually gets produced. Uh, so I've got to add that source code file and then commit my changes again. I'm going back through my uh, command history and not finding it. So we'll just say git commit and amend the commit message. Um, get status shows that we have no changes out. Um, so here's the name of our branch. So uh, then I have to go over to our test portal um, and submit a new test. Uh, so I'm not sure why that's secured other than, uh, I just don't know. Um, I guess if somebody were to impersonate that, that wouldn't be such a big deal. Oh, so I've mentioned that my branch here is to an atomic phase. We're going to be using the atomic opening book. Um, our comment is going to, whoops, well, okay, our comment's going to be to variant uh, phase limit and piece value. Um, let's see, anything else? I think that's pretty much it. So in order to be able to, oh wait, wait a second. There's one thing that's tricky about a tuning session. You can't just do a normal test or a number of games. You have to say, I'm going to use this stochastic perturbation uh, simultaneous approximation or whatever it is, that SPSA algorithm uh, or heuristic. So you have to specify that I'm going to play this branch against itself. And this um, interface still asks you what parameters do you want to pass to each one of these. That's OK. Um, so in order to um, be able to submit this, you need the benchmark number just to make sure that the core functionality has not changed. 
uh, each time a client downloads the code for this branch, it tests that the bench signature matches up with, um, with the number that's provided in the test. And if these two numbers are equal, and if this branch were master, then you would know that with a pretty high degree of certainty that there was not a functional change. Um, so we use these benchmark positions to figure out um, not just performance, but also make sure, just verify as a sanity check that functionally things are identical to how they used to be. Um, and if that benchmark changes from one revision to the next, it's because you've come up with a way to improve the algorithm to either look at more or fewer positions while searching at the same depth. Um, and you'd use a test to verify that it's an improvement but it would be not be a non-functional change. At that point, it would be a functional change if you're searching fewer or more nodes. Both can be good for various reasons. Um, all right, so now I need my list of parameters that I'm gonna be testing with. Um, so this defines, here's the current value, minimum, maximum, um, I think like an alpha and theta algorithm. Um, parameter. Um, one of these defines what's the variance at the start. Another defines like how quickly should the, the upper and lower bounds be changed with respect to um, the number of tests that you're doing. Um, so we're going to use all the default parameters here. Uh, one thing worth noting, not that you're able to even change it here, is that um, for purposes of our variant testing, we're actually making use of res uh, draw results. We're not discarding them like the upstream testing does. Um, so uh, if draw under these um, engine versus engine conditions, um, it indicates that um, that one branch is not stronger than the other, as opposed to just discarding the result. And that does end up being important uh, for, well, I guess not for this, but for testing just in general, um, that your change is an improvement, we actually make use of the draw results. Anyway, I'm not being very clear at the moment. Um, I need to re-review how this worked. I think you play like a hundred games or something, or some. Actually, you play two games with the same parameters for each game. Um, one with white, one with black. And we make sure that if you have a two-nil result, that's much more significant um, than a one and a half half result, because one and a half half means that. Um, that they're, one of the branches is not that significantly stronger than the other, uh, as opposed to 2 nil, which is a really significant result. Uh, I'll show you sometime, if you're curious. Um, or if I've got the code on hand and I can find it. So I'm just taking one last gander through this. This is a normal test. Um, I've tried the other test type called regression, have not figured out exactly how it works. Uh, this is for atomic variant playing the branch against itself with the same test options and the same signature. Doing a tuning or SPSA um, sort of test. Just playing a... I could bump this up. Um, I could bump this to 20,000 and 10,000. We do have the resources to do it. Um, oops, let's just say 10,000. So this defines the number of games, this defines how quickly to degrade the parameters, which should scale with the number of games. Um, gamma and alpha, I've looked at before, I've done numerous tests with before, but these, um, after many tests, these are the ideal parameters to be using. Um, clipping, yeah, we'll use... Um, Use the default parameters for most of these. I don't think these matter as much as the parameters above here. And 
yeah, one thread per engine um, using the atomic opening book uh, with the depth of eight. Um, priority, just use the same priority as all the other tests that are ongoing. And I think throughput says that each client should do 200 games of time and then upload those games to the server. Um, I don't actually, I don't remember if the games get uploaded or not. I think they do. But upload 200 results at a time to the server. So we're going to submit this. Oh no. Um, so I missed one step here. Uh, that step. It's so easy to miss a single step. Get branch. Shows you the branch I'm on. To, come on. Can I not select text? Apparently not. Can I go back and select the... No. Okay. Clear. <laughs> now it's selected all of it. It's exactly what I was going for. How did it know? All right. So get push origin tune atomic phase. Um, and then we push this and it's all good to go. And now when we submit the form, yeah. Oh, check that out. Other tests have been submitted. Um, I didn't know all these tests were going on. That's pretty cool. So my latest change, the branch I just deleted, um, had a pretty negative result, so I'm not going to pursue that further. Um, we're doing regression tests just to verify whether recently some strength has been gained or lost. Um, these individually don't take very long, um, running on a large cluster. Um, so I think that's about it. Um, I intend to do something similar uh, that I did for Atomic here for other variants, but since there's so many tests ongoing, um, I don't see a strong need to do to submit additional things immediately. Um, This is interesting too. I, this is 274 games in, and it indicates uh, already a 5 ELO. Oh, okay. This I'm sorry. This is a regression test. I was going to say if somebody's submitting a change, and that indicates a ELO improvement, then that's pretty awesome. But um, no, this is just verifying that upstream changes haven't broken stuff. Um, and so this is how, after we make a big change that we detect, um, that we haven't lost much in terms of ELO, or if we have, then we can start looking at what were the changes and what can we do to um, mitigate that loss. Or are there new opportunities for improvement thanks to changes that we've merged in from upstream? Um, this changes like here, so we're doing a standard comparison of um, latest branch to uh, the previous branch, I suppose. So we'll see here all the things that changed between releases. Uh, that's a lot more than okay. A good number of these were upstream, but um, I did end up axing a lot of code. Um, just to make this code base much more manageable. Also, this is interesting. This is a suggestion from another one of the uh, Leechess developers. Um, Isaac had suggested that I do something to speed up the promotion, move, the King promotion um, move type decoder. I looked at a suggestion, we toyed around with it a bit, ultimately came up with, well, just swap this order of operations here because this particular expression this um, move parameter and these bits equals this flag check is something that we're doing in other places too um, so 
it makes sense uh, for short circuit evaluation purposes that that be first. And so the compiler has the opportunity to optimize and say, I want to check this parameter uh, or check this expression first. And then if this evaluates to false, then don't bother checking the rest of this. And don't bother checking other places where this is evaluating to false too. Um, so that's really, really small micro optimization that saves a t uh, like 1.7 um, thousandths. <laughs> so it's like 0.1% or 0.17%, which is basically 0.2%, which is like two in a thousand operations faster. Um, just because we changed our in, uh, decoder. Um, but yeah, there have been tons of changes here. I did end up m taking uh, the loser's chess code and made that a sub-variant of anti-chess. That way, if you're not playing anti-chess, um, you're going through half as much code as you used to be going through, which is good. Uh, whereas bad is that for anti-chess and for loser's chess, it's a little bit more complicated now. Um, the two variants have to like coexist with each other, but they had so much in common to begin with, it didn't make sense for them to be two separate variants, in my opinion. Um, it also simplified the code base a bit and allowed us to find other opportunities to optimize. Um, anything? Oh, also, uh, well, no, let's not bother with that. Um, update the author's file. Yes, yeah, so it accepted some, oh, this is interesting. This is a documentation change. Okay, yeah, it suggested from the initial coding um, that Lee Chess is anti-chess. isn't losers, it's actually giveaway. Uh, there's just so many variants and anti-chess isn't an official variant name on most sites. Um, and most documentations won't recognize it either. It's actually giveaway chess. Um, let's see. But it's giveaway chess minus the castling rules, uh, which is cool with me. Um, oh yeah, there's some upstream optimizations. Like if you have a constant you're not using, just zero it out. Um, uh, avoid misuse of this ar uh, array for pawns and yeah, add some assertions so that when people test with debugging enabled, things um, can be tested correctly. There was a multi principal variation issue. This is complicated stuff. Let me just go here. Where we don't have a valid score for each PV line. This can happen if we stop the search in an unfortunate moment. Um, so there's no functional change here. Uh, however, we ensure that the PV values are valid now. Um, so that's a complicated mess. I didn't look, well, I saw the assertions here. I didn't try to fully understand exactly what was going on here. Um, but it makes sense that if you have like an infinite value, that that's not a real value. Like checkmate is the best value you can get. And infinite indicates that you haven't really completed a search or an evaluation there. Um, oh, there was some mess having to do with a move list not being in the correct order which affected some operating systems and some compilers. Uh, it's been improved. Um, various other improvements have taken place, um, like simplifying the uh, distance to king protector bonus. So that was pretty cool. Um, let's see, and there was a number of code cleanup things that happened upstream. Here, this just says that when we're doing a static evaluation by default, um, let's go back to the header file position.h. Yeah, here we are. 
yeah, if you don't have a default value for static evaluation, just use a zero. Um, that ensures that when we're trying to figure out does a move lose material in a pretty trivial way, um, that you don't have to pass a zero in as the parameter every single, every single time you call the method or function, like here. Um, there's no reason that the move picker would need to know what value zero means. It just knows that it needs to invoke um, a static evaluation. Um, and so this allows code to compile faster, I suppose, because uh, the compiler really should optimize that parameter out in most cases anyway. Um, Let's see, modify static exchange. Oh, right. So we figured out that having this huge block of code for anti chess didn't help as much as we originally thought it did. Or, at least in the current code base, um, it's no longer necessary because other parameters have been tuned in such a way that, um, that this no longer yields the benefit that it once did. Because I know we initially tested this, and this did have a big benefit at first. But in the current code base, it's no longer required. Um, and so we simplified this with normal testing bounds. I think upstream they use like minus 4, 1 for simplifications. For variance, we use minus 10, 5. Um, so if something gains 5, is if something... Um, is more likely to gain 5 ELO than it is to lose 10, then we accept it. Um, so we can see that this is an improvement at a slow time control and even a fast time control. Getting rid of these extra code somehow. Um, yeah, I'm somewhat confused how we ended up with more wins than losses in this test. Because originally this code was very useful, but as it stands now, it's more likely for the code without, I'm sorry, the, it's more likely for, that if we had left this code in place that we would lose 10 ELO with respect to um, taking out the code. So we're more likely to have gained ELO than lost it from this simplification. Um, or we're more likely to have um, not lost 10 than we are to have not gained 5, if that makes sense. Uh, okay, ooh, did I goof up? Oh no. Pre please resubmit SPSA tuning session if intended as such. Uh, did I goof up? Oh, this says standard. I selected Atomic, and somehow when I resubmitted the form, it picked standard. Um, yeah, we'll resubmit it. My bad, somehow. Um, yeah, that's just wrong. So let's resubmit. This is a Atomic. Uh, tune Atomic Phase versus Tune Atomic Phase. Tuning session, 20,000, 10,000. Uh, okay, I put my parameter list there using the atomic opening book. Put my comment in place, which was tune atomic variant value and piece value, which goes over here. Um, and then we need the parameter list and the benchmark, or the signature. So let's, can I, I've still lost my ability to, oh, there we go. We're back to how we should be. So verify that um, standard functionality has not changed in the last time since I've run this benchmark. Since the, since the last time since I've run the bench. I'm not sure what the appropriate terminology is for having performed a benchmark test. Um, all right, so our parameters are these. Um, 
Okay, we'll take another look over this. This says Atomic this time, which is correct. I thought I selected Atomic last time, but I must have goofed. Um, I'm going to use the Atomic opening book, use all these parameters, doing 20,000 games, degrading with an alpha, well, degrading with an A parameter of 10,000. Uh, I think this makes sense. Yeah, I don't see anything mistaken with it. This is still using one thread and a time control of um, 10 seconds plus a tenth of a second per move. This is a way to get tons of games in very quickly. All right, so this says Atomic this time, which is good. That's what we were going for. All right, so let me copy this URL. Thanks, uh, I now see I submitted the variant uh, incorrectly last time. So here you go. Yep, and this links over to the new test I created. Um, so after this goes some number of iterations, um, Below this list of parameters will appear a graph or a plot uh, showing how these parameters had an initial value. Um, oh, I probably didn't need to specify this many parameters. Oops. Why are there like 16 L attributes to each array? Um, well, that's not ideal. Uh, oops, I submitted. There are way many more parameters than necessary. I'll resubmit with um, fewer. Uh, it doesn't actually matter for purposes of the test, but um, here, let's, let's stop this. New test, new atomic, tune atomic phase. Um, let's just actually take these parameters from the other. Yeah. To an atomic phase is correct. Um, still doing SPSA, still doing 20,000 games, degrading at 10,000. Um, uh, atomic WPD. My comment was what was it? To an atomic, these things. Where I goofed here was that there aren't 16 attributes in each array. So like here when I copied this, it's great and all that I have as many parameters as I need, but if you actually look at the code that's affected, um, so here I'm tuning phase limit and piece value. Phase limit has two elements. Um, piece value has zero one or I'm sorry one two three four five six so the greatest element here would be the sixth element or index five um, so this piece NB should really be piece type NB um, so this does not need to go above Five for either middle game or end game parameters. All those zeros here we see like index six and then the parameter is zero, those can all go. Because there's no pieces or piece types greater than six. Um, I assume that upstream they fixed that too. We'll fix that. So standard atomic, atomic, atomic. Right, here's my test. With all the default parameters, except we're going to use the atomic opening book. OK, 
Okay, this looks better. That all looks the same now. Now I should look upstream and see like this piece value array. Uh, surely upstream this psqt.cpp uh, has piece value defined using the correct array dimension. Or rather, they don't define the array dimension, if I remember right. Um, something they've been getting rid of over. This should be piece type envy. They screwed up. This should say const value piece value with piece type nb, although they in general have been getting rid of these bounds to their arrays as well. Um, but 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. What is the value of piece type nb? Uh, piece type nb is equal to 8. But yeah, in C you're not required to specify the bounds of, or the final bound in an array. Um, be it a one-dimensional or multi-dimensional array, this final bound is unnecessary. And in fact, all causes is memory bloat. Um, so I'm actually going to check this out and fix it. This is way more ambitious than I usually get with regard to upstream changes. Um, so we're going to clone this. Copy that. Actually, I can't do it there. Um, if I'm going to submit a change, it's got to be through my repository. <laughs> okay. Um, get checkout. All right, we're going to say git fetch org or upstream master. Just make sure that we know where the latest master is at. Um, Get checkout upstream slash master. Right, get checkout b um, uh, Oh, do I not have that here anymore? Um, const piece value. This is going to be a walk in the park in terms of uh, getting this to test. That's what they want. That's the format that they followed in other examples. Grab const, um, let's say grep for <laughs> uh, literal brackets. You'll see that in general they don't put these. Oh, that's interesting. I stand corrected. All right. So, format they use um, is not piece or face nb blank. But regardless, um, uh, does this compile? Make clean. Make, build, uh, define an architecture. I think this is just simply overlooked between all their testing and tuning that they've done. Um, when you're tuning, you have to get rid of the word const, uh, or it won't let you change the values or reassign values that are in the arrays. Um, as for piece versus piece type, that's a change that they introduced months ago, but apparently forgot about this. Um, like, I can understand how they missed this. It's not so hard. Um, oh, wow. Uh, so I've got to fix this in two files. Um, What's this look like in header files ordinarily? Okay. That does not help me. Um, Alright, so what was my error? My error is that um, 
It's a conflicting definition with types. Um, each value types. Age has got to say piece type NB. It does not necessarily need to specify the first dimension here. I don't think. The compiler can figure out the first dimension of array. It just needs the dimensions of bounds after the first one. Um, all right, so conflicting definition. Oh, because now I didn't define it as const. Um, will this compile? Perhaps part of the reason this is missed is just due to people not knowing syntax. Or people being the one person who discovered this, if anyone before me did. Okay. Ah, okay, so this can't be const. That's why. It's because the assignment is delayed. Um, my mistake. So that's why piece value is not const. Um, still, um, there, there's no reason for the array dimension to be as large as it is. Um, middle game for other color. Yeah, how is, where is this done? Oh, we're doing all kinds of assignments here. Um, oh, but furthermore, we're actually using all the array elements, even though not having initially stated that we're doing so. That is tricky stuff. Oh dear. Uh, I've got to scrap this too. Wow. Um, yeah, I apologize to Fabian because I screwed up yet again. Um, all right, so Stockfish authors actually knew what they were doing. They just didn't explain it to anyone. Um, but yeah, this assignment takes place between each play. Um, jeez, get checkout, uh, tune, atomic phase. Uh, status, get checkout, everything. Get branch, delete const piece value, because that didn't work. Um, so if I'm tuning the piece values, I also have to call the initialization routine between plays. That's something I neglected to do. Um, All right, so does this compile? Clean, and then we've got a make build command here somewhere. Um, incorrect. I found while trying to fix an upstream bug. submit with pqst init called during each initialization. This was my mistake. This is just so tricky to do. Um, 
All right, PSQT has not been declared in the scope where I put the code. Because that's this namespace here. Um, all right, there's our end of routine. Here's where I can safely put the code where the namespace has been declared. In fact, in, still in that namespace here. Um, this should work. But yeah, it's so easy to submit a bad test. Um, now, I guess I can say um, this makes the assumption that a white pawn and a black pawn are worth the same amount in material value, which seems to me like a good normalizing assumption, um, especially because upstream they're using that assumption as well. Um, however, I don't know. Perhaps uh, there are different ways to tune that don't make that simplifying assumption. Either way, um, get branch get status diff. All right. Oh, wait, I did the compile step, right? So now if I run it, yeah, that's good. Um, and if I say bench, that works just fine. All right. Get add psqt get commit. I'm going to revise the previous um, message. Ah. Plus initialize. Or with initialization. All right. Get push origin this thing. That was messy. All right. So really, it would have helped if. Um, actually, I'm kind of confused what the deal was. Like. So we've got an array that accommodates 16 pieces, but really it's just six pieces per color. But the two colors aren't spelled out here. Um, I guess that's fine because that allows us to speed up the array lookup. Um, it's just interesting to me that they would... I mean, I guess they're the experts. They know how to do this. Um, you would negate a value once as opposed to figuring out where's the appropriate point in the code to do the negation. But I guess if you're adding a whole bunch of pieces together and summing up white pieces and black pieces and you don't want to sum those independently and then do a negation but you want to just sum them all in a sum, I guess this sort of dimensionality makes sense where you have all your white pieces defined here and then down here, you'd find the values of the black pieces based on the values of the white pieces. And due to having done it this way, you can't declare that this array is constant because it isn't. During the brief, very brief segment between um, doing this step and doing this down here, um, uh, the piece values do change because you're specifying the negative piece values. Still, adding a const, um, I don't know, it'd be better if they were to specify exactly what went into this array. So if they were to say zero and then these five values and then two more zeros and then say zero these negated values for black and then two more zeros. That'd be a cleaner way to specify how to do that. Um, anyhow, um, or just use an array with greater dimension, but then you'd lose the benefit of um, being able to do a single index lookup. So that would actually be a slowdown. 
So I get why you'd combine the white pieces and the black pieces into the same array, but initializing it this way is messy. And it hurts readability, because somebody in types.h has got to go, like, try to find, okay, where in the code is this actually initialized? Whereas if you were to initialize this in the header file, you wouldn't have to reinitialize it both here as well as down here. There's nothing transparent about this, but whatever. They're the experts. They know what trade-offs are reasonable. Um, all right, so I force pushed to an atomic phase, which means I get to resubmit the test. And hopefully I do it correctly this time. This is like my fourth attempt. We'll get it right. I'm not failing it on purpose, I assure you. It's just that this is detailed stuff. All right, so the benchmark, as we figured out over here, I mean, I could rerun the test yet again, but um, would not hurt me to do so. Um, in fact, let's do it. Let's see, are there additional comments here? No. So close that, close the upstream code, um, close this. All right, so notes. There's our commit message, which we'll put in the notes section, just because I'm not sure what else I want to put as a note for this. So commit message works as well as anything. Um, Stockfish Bench should come up with that same magic number, assuming I haven't screwed something up. Yeah, 610-7863, same number. Yeah, there it is. All right, parameters are going to be uh, these parameters, but only a subset of these because we don't have to have, uh, we don't have to initialize all 15 addresses, just the first six. Um, then another six automatically get initialized from uh, eight through eight plus five is 13. Um, so this is all we have to specify for the test to run successfully. Um, using all the default parameters, single threaded, 10 seconds plus a tenth of a second increment, atomic opening book, Good. Finally. All right. Jeez. What a mess. All right. Copy link address. Um, sorry for my. Oh, Ian. Sorry for my earlier confusions. Here we go. I think I finally got it. This part was what I was missing in my last commit. This is vital to ensure that the black pieces get adjusted from run to run, not just the white pieces. This blank line is unnecessary but doesn't break anything, so um, since this change isn't ultimately going to make it into um, what gets pushed into master anyway, I'll just leave the blank line there. <sighs> what a marathon. All right. It's a lot easier to code all this while I'm not attempting to explain it at the same time. Although in rare cases, having explained it actually helps me make better sense of it. But usually I don't have to articulate it aloud. Anyway, we've successfully come up with a way of tuning uh, the phase limit uh, just for the atomic variant. And so this means that each time Stockfish runs, uh, you can provide as many of these parameters as you want to it, and it'll um, play against itself using the Qt chess tool. And um, we'll see if it makes any difference whether or not we start the end game at a different phase or based on a different material count. Um, 
and we'll actually tune the values of the pieces as we're tuning the game phase, just to make things exciting. Um, but no, this means that we can say that a queen is worth like eight pawns, uh, or that a rook is worth six or something, and then have the material count for the endgame phase also change. Um, so if you're curious about the SPSA tuning algorithm, I think it was James Spall, uh, Professor Spall, or, uh, if I remember right, came up with the algorithm. Or if not, has at least championed it and explained it very well in public. Um, but I'd be glad to try to answer questions about it. Uh, I've unfortunately run out of time here. I do have to go. Um, but yeah, if you're curious about what it takes to produce a test, basically you just have to add this tune code um, define appropriate ranges for the parameters and um, then define what parameters you want tuned and then successfully submit your test using the appropriate variant and the appropriate um, book selection be it atomic or three check with a number three or uh, king of the hill and so forth we have a opening books for testing for each variant um, supply a comment, supply the parameter list that comes out when you just type in the program name like this um, after making sure it compiles. So if you have some prowess as a programmer, basically just code up the code changes, run the program, make sure the bench doesn't change, um, push your commit to GitHub, and then reference it from um, your test request. I happen to have the fortune that my tests um, use the branch name that is on my own repository. I'm sure there's a way to get this to work for branches that are on different repositories. Anyway, it's doable. And if you have questions, let me know. Um, I did announce on the forums, um, on the Leech's forums, that uh, we are accepting tuning and testing submissions at this time. So if you have a great idea, just don't expect other people to code it. Feel free to try to code it yourself. If it ends up being, if it shows some promise, um, other developers will jump on your idea and find a way to improve it. Um, or if you're just that awesome that your change makes it through in the first round of testing, even better. Uh, that's pretty rare, but it does sometimes happen. Anyway, hope that was fun or educational. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.